In our previous episode on the world of A Song of Ice and Fire, we detailed Daenerys Targaryen's transformation from an exiled princess to a true conqueror. Through the trials and tribulations thrown her way throughout her travels within Essos, she developed into a ruler truly capable of reclaiming her birthright. Yet despite amassing a deadly army, her kind heart would begin to derail the momentum she had garnered up until this point, leaving her embroiled in the politics of Slaver's Bay. In this episode, we will cover Daenerys' ongoing struggle to ensure that her newly earned moniker of Breaker of Chains was not short-lived. Perhaps she would have been better off being cold-hearted, or perhaps not. Such things are impossible to predict in a complex world, which is something that also makes it hard to build an authentic story. Today's sponsor brings you a way to either control or derail a story in a suitably unpredictable way, with the throw of a dice. It's Awaken Realms Vault and their Story Dice range. These are special dice for use in tabletop games, such as D&D 5th Edition, with a variety of effects. I'll highlight a few examples. First, their RPG adventure dice provide story information to drive events. For example, you can use their emotion dice to give an NPC a random attitude or reaction to the player, stirring up drama or driving progress. Critter dice have uneven distributions of numbers for special uses. For example, the Koi die is more likely to give you high numbers, so if you think that a high roll is most appropriate to your story, or you want to reward your players, let them use this die. Similarly, they offer Awaken Realms games dice, with a variety of custom balancing setups with certain rules. For example, there is the Intruder die for use in Nemesis games, where you're more likely to encounter danger than with regular rolls, to spice things up a notch. Finally, if you want to skip all the special conditions and just want some straight up nice dice, then get their quality RPG dice for vibrant, beautiful and easy to read dice for all your regular rolling needs. Let the Dice Gods and Dungeon Masters influence your tabletop tales in new ways with the Awaken Realm Vault Story Dice Collection. Check it out at the link in the description. With the defeat of the Yunkish forces outside the gate of their city, Daenerys had become ever more confident in the necessity of her continued crusade against slavery and oppression within Slaver's Bay. This emboldened the young Targaryen to cast her eyes even further north, to the mighty city of Marine. At this point, however, the residents of Slaver's Bay had become wary of the potential that this upstart of old Valyrian blood had to upend the existing balance of power that had emerged following the doom of the Freehold. As a result, preparations were made far in advance of the Mother of Dragons' arrival outside their gates. The Miranese withdrew all of their soldiers behind the immense walls of the city, and left the lands behind them bereft of any resource which could be of use to the oncoming Targaryen army. Moreover, they added an element of terror into the equation. With the majority of Daenerys' host being composed of former slaves, 163 enslaved children were nailed onto the mileposts along the coast road. Thus, as the Targaryen army made its way from Yunkai to Marine, they were confronted with the very embodiment of the horrors Daenerys wished to bring to an end, mile by mile of their journey. Following this harrowing march, Daenerys decided to encamp her host just outside the walls of Marine as an act of defiance, to show that despite their best efforts, the slavers would not break the spirits of the freed men and women of Yunkai and Astapor. By now, Daenerys' host numbered some 80,000 individuals, even if less than a quarter of them were active combatants. The Miranese sent forward their finest warrior, Osnak Zopal, the hero of Marine, who challenged the Targaryens to single combat. Atop his white charger and holding a 14-foot lance, Osnak taunted the besieging enemy. At the same time, discussions commenced between Daenerys and her closest advisors regarding who should be sent to face him. Eventually, Daenerys decided upon her bodyguard, Strong Belwes. The reasoning behind this was twofold. As Belwes was an ex-slave, his death would not bring prestige to the hero of Marine. Likewise, should the former pit fighter defeat Osnak, it would bring shame to Marine and strengthen Daenerys' reputation. Thus, the duel was joined, and Osnak immediately charged at Belwes, who injured his horse, forcing Osnak to dismount and draw his sword. As was his tradition, Belwes allowed his opponent to wound him on his scarred stomach, 
before beheading the horseman with his arak. The colossal eunuch then held aloft the decapitated head of the nobleman for all upon the great walls of marine to see, who began to loose stray arrows at him in spite of the fact they were out of range. In response, Belwas squatted in the direction of the city, defecated, then used the cloak of Osnak to wipe himself, killed his horse, and looted the body before returning to the Targaryen camp triumphant. While this represented a minor victory for the Targaryen cause, the imposing walls of Marine remained an issue. The newly appointed commander of the Second Sons, Ben Plum, suggested entering through the sewers, which Daenerys rejected out of hand. She then visited a camp of freedmen, where she was assaulted by the former head of the Second Sons, Mero, who had hidden among her followers. Fortunately for Daenerys, Arstan intervened and slew the sellsword with ease. However, the skill Arstan demonstrated caused Jorah to question his true identity, and Arstan revealed that he was in fact Sir Barristan Selmy. Jorah would then inform Daenerys that following on from the Battle of the Trident and the death of her brother Rhaegar at the hands of the usurper Robert Baratheon, Sir Barristan had betrayed House Targaryen. By bending the knee and joining the Kingsguard of Robert Baratheon, Barristan did not deserve to be trusted, a point Sir Jorah pushed to protect his position at Daenerys' side. Barristan initially countered this point by stating that he had shied away from revealing his identity for fear that word would make its way back to the Lannisters that he had joined her cause. Unfortunately, the angered queen did not accept this as sufficient cause. However, the former Lord Commander of the Kingsguard, having travelled so far to find a liege worthy of his service, would not be undermined by Sir Jorah, a man who, by all rights, should have been executed for his actions. Sir Barristan, therefore, revealed that Jorah had acted as an informant for the Iron Throne since Daenerys' wedding to Khal Drogo, and despite his protests, Jorah was forced to admit the truth of the aged knight's words. Infuriated by what she deemed a betrayal on both their parts, Daenerys ordered both Sir Jorah and Sir Barristan to lead the assault through the sewers, half-heartedly hoping they would perish in the attempt. During the main assault, composed of barrages of arrow fire upon the walls while a ram broke down the city's gates, Jorah, Barristan, Belwas, and 19 others entered through the sewers. They subsequently defeated the guards, who were not defending the walls, and freed the slaves of the city, who promptly revolted, allowing the Targaryen forces to take the city. In retaliation for the vile acts conducted before Daenerys arrived in the city, the last of the Targaryens had 163 of the Great Masters rounded up. Each and every one of those assembled was subsequently nailed to posts on the plaza that stood outside the Great Pyramid of Marine which avenged the children crucified upon the coast road. The Queen's next course of action was to now deliberate upon the fates of the traitors within her midst. She could find it within herself to forgive and pardon the aged knight Sir Barristan. However, the same could not be said for Sir Jorah. Unable to overlook such a blatant breach of her trust, the former Lord of Bear Island was exiled again, with the ominous warning that should he return to Marine, he would be executed. Fortunately, the void left in Daenerys' only genuine connection to Westeros was filled by Barristan, who spoke to her of her grandfather, King Jaehaerys II, while further elaborating upon the life of her forebear, Aerys. In doing so, he provided context to the unspoken truth that when each Targaryen is born, a coin is tossed by the gods as to whether the madness inherent in their family would overtake that particular scion of old Valyria. In doing so, he informed the queen that, initially, Aerys had not been mad, but it had overtaken him as the years passed. Although Daenerys did not want to hear of this at that moment, she informed the old knight that she would like to hear more in the days to come, before naming Sir Barristan Lord Commander of the Queen's Guard. In this role, Barristan trained a number of the nobility in the ways of Western chivalry, as well as some 60 formerly enslaved people with 30 persevering, and the most promising among them being squired to him personally. Further ill tidings came to the court of the Mother of Dragons, as in Astapor, the ruling council that she had installed had been deposed, with each of the councillors executed. A former butcher named Cleon, who was once enslaved to Grasdan Mo Ohur, was now king of Astapor, and one of his first mandates was to have all of the city's former nobility enslaved. 
Further, Yun Kai had begun raising new levies and sending out envoys, hoping to garner allies in the fight against the Breaker of Chains. Daenerys blamed herself for the failings of the cities she had once liberated, and decided upon a change of tact in her approach going forward. Therefore, Daenerys called all of her most loyal lieutenants to her side and informed them that she would remain in Marine to learn to rule one city before embarking upon the far more ambitious plan of heading the entirety of the Seven Kingdoms. Word had begun trickling back to Westeros at this point, with Varys informing the small council of rumours of a three-headed dragon hatched in Carth. This was not the end of the stories either, as among the acolytes of the Citadel, word spread of dragons in Ashai, Carth and Marine, along with news of supposed slave revolts in Essos. Soon, the truth reached Dawn and King's Landing regarding the hatching of dragons and the slave revolts. Meanwhile, Euron Greyjoy claimed at the King's Moot of the Iron Islands that he would marry the Mother of Dragons, dispatching his brother Victarion and the Iron Fleet to Slaver's Bay to bring his soon-to-be betrothed to him. Such tidings also made their way as far as the Wall before long, which convinced Maester Aemon that Daenerys was the princess who was promised, which prompted the old man and Samuel Tully to make their way to the Citadel in Old Town. Aemon unfortunately died on the voyage. Still, Samwell informed the Archmaester Marwyn, who, upon hearing what Aemon had deliberated upon, decided to travel to Slaver's Bay to offer the Breaker of Chains his services. Despite all this bubbling support in her homeland, in Marine, Daenerys' experiment with rulership had proven to be faltering. The Sons of the Harpy, a militant order composed of Giscari noblemen, had formed in order to resist Targaryen rule. They subsequently waged a guerrilla war against her, emerging during the night to slaughter freedmen, unsullied and shavepates, before disappearing back into the winding alleyways of the city before they could be captured. In response, Daenerys founded the Brazen Beasts, a city watch composed of the people of Marine, while also placing a bounty of a thousand honours upon the head of each of the Sons of the Harpy's heads. To fund this costly endeavour, a blood tax was levied upon the noble families of the city, while two hostages from each of these prestigious slaver families were demanded in an attempt to stem the bloodshed. Despite all these measures taken, Daenerys Targaryen's faltering experiment with rulership was to continue. Indeed, her role as a kind-hearted ruler grappling with the realities of a world that stubbornly refused to consent to the changes she wished to implement would soon begin to bear heavily upon her. However, this is a story for another day. The following few videos in this series will complete the story of Daenerys Targaryen up until the events of the Winds of Winter before returning us to the shores of Westeros. We plan to cover the battles of many other fantasy, sci-fi and space opera universes, so make sure to subscribe and press the bell button. Please consider liking and sharing as it helps immensely, and don't forget to comment. We'll try to read and respond to every comment as we want to know what you think about this video and which videos you hope to see in the future. This is the Wizards and Warriors channel and we'll catch you on the next one.